Hi, this is Dr. Lesane again, and today we're going to look at a screencast about the blogging assignment for young adult literature for the semester. So here, here I am back at Live Binders. Uh, I've already logged in, and I'm going to click on the binder for LSSL 5385 for the fall semester. That's our binder, and load it in. I'm going to select the tab that says Assignments and the sub-tab that says Blog. And here you'll find the directions for the blog. You're going to blog about the books that are required for the course. Those are the 30 books from the front page of the syllabus, and we'll look at those in just a few minutes. And you're going to put these on a blog that you create. If you've already created a blog for another class, for example, 5360 students this past summer used a blog for their course, then you can just add to that same blog. If not, you're going to be creating one, and the details for doing that are below. The blog post will not only demonstrate that you've read the required books, but also that you've read the text and you can apply material from the text to the required reading. Note that the first thing I suggest to you is please, please, please to watch this screencast that I'm making right now about the assignment because I think that it will explain things in a lot more detail than I can in just words. But let's go over the basics here. Each blog entry must contain the following elements. Number one, a bibliographic citation using APA format. If you're smart, you'll go to the front page of that syllabus and all of the books that I have listed are listed there in a bibliography that use APA format. Now for the ones where you have choice, you'll have to create that bibliographic citation on your own. There are plenty of online resources to help you do this. You could also have a copy of the APA manual as well. After you've done that, you're still not there. You've got three more pieces to do. The first uh, piece after the bibliographic citation is to write a brief summary of the book. For fiction, I think that these are the important questions. Who's the main character? What's the problem or the conflict? How does that character go about solving the problem? And how does the story end? Unlike most summaries where you would not give away the ending, for this particular summary you will because in part that proves to me that you've read the book, or at least you've read the first chapter, the last chapter, and a few in between, but I'm hoping that you'll go ahead and read the entire book. If it's a nonfiction selection, you're going to talk instead about the general subject matter of the book, how the book is set up into divisions, categories, uh, extras that the book might have, things that you might have learned along the way, but you're still giving me a summary of the contents of the book. Once you've done that, and that's a pretty good sized paragraph, the next piece is your response to the book. This is your response to the book, not a reviewer's response, not a blurb response, your response. So I want you to consider questions like the ones right here. You're certainly free to address other questions, but this should get you started. Who's the intended audience of the book? What's the age range here? And notice I say range because there is no such thing as this is a book for 12 year olds. Please don't ever say that. This is a book that might be a book for 10 through 14 year olds. There's a bit of a range because we know that not all 12 year olds are the same. Some 10 year olds are going to be able to access the book. Sometimes it's going to be 14 and 15 year olds before they can access the same book. So give me an idea of intended audience. You can also talk about kids who are interested in and then fill in the blank with the topic or the theme of the book. What might you um, recommend to a student who's read this book? They come back and they say, oh, I want another one just like it. What are some books that you might recommend as a follow-up? What teachers might find this a valuable book for their classes? Because we do want to help involve English language arts teachers, certainly, but s some of the books may be good for content area people as well. What did you think were the major strengths of the book? So talk to me about character development, theme, um, things that you've found were particularly important. It might be the use of dialogue and how dialogue moves plot forward. And also you could consider what lesson might come from reading the book. Are there some teaks objectives that you might cover? Are there some lesson plans that you might put together? Give me some idea about your response to the book. 
Like the summary in number two, I expect this to be a well-developed paragraph. And finally, all entries need to include how the book meets one or more of the criteria for books using the information that's in your textbook. You can talk about genre criteria, you can talk about developmental criteria, any information from the book. I'm going to show you what one of these should look like in just a moment, but just trying to give you an idea of these are the four elements to any blog post. Keep your entries no longer than 250 words. Certainly from time to time maybe one might creep up a little bit, but it shouldn't get much beyond this. And of course if it's too short you're probably not addressing these four elements here. So make sure that you're giving me enough information to let me know that this is indeed the book that you read. So those are the basic directions for doing the blog. Let's um, go ahead and look at a blog. If you have a Gmail account, and most of us do, and if you don't, it's free. Um, if you have a Gmail account, you can create through Blogger as many different blogs as you want. I have several with Blogger. I have my uh, regular book review uh, blog through them, and I also have set up this sample blog for young adult literature for this semester. And you can see right here, the blog that I've set up. It took very little time to establish this. I chose one of the templates that was already available to me and decided I wanted to use this one. I already had a profile in place because I do have other blogs with them, but you'll be asked and prompted to create your own profile. Then I simply wrote my blog entry for one of the required books using the directions that I was given. So. Let's come back here and take a look at what it is that I did. Once your blog is set up, once you have the template in place, once you've filled out your profile, then you're ready to post an entry. This little pencil right here is where you create a new post. You simply click on it and it will allow you to do it. You can see the other tools that are here. You can view the posts you already have. You can view the entire blog. At this point, I just want to look at a blog entry that I've already put together as an example. I wrote one for The Chocolate War, which is one of the required books for the course. So let's take a look at it. When you are putting together your blog, you will need a title for the blog post. I think the best title that you can use is the title of the book itself. That basically tells me what's there. Notice that I have inserted, oops, didn't mean to do that. I have inserted uh, the cover for that particular blog post as well, and I expect you to do so. I'm going to show you in a minute how to go out and grab a cover if you don't already have it. Remember now, there are four parts to the blog. The first one says the bibliographic citation. So here it is. This is APA format being followed. You should do the same for yours. That takes about three minutes to put that together. The next piece of a blog entry is the summary of the book. And that is this piece right here. You can see it's a, a several sentences long. So who's the main character? Jerry Renault. What is the problem? He's been challenged by the vigils to refuse to sell chocolates in the annual fund drive. How does he go about solving this problem? He goes along at first, but then he decides he needs to stand up to the vigils, stand up for himself. How does the story end? Well, it might just cost him his life going against those vigils. So I've managed to answer my four key questions in about four sentences. You can do that too. It takes a little bit of skill. If yours is longer, that's fine. Remember, we have 250 words that we can play with here. So the next piece is a response to the book. Right here. I'm trying to highlight it so that you can see where I'm responding. Notice the use of the pronoun I. If I'm responding to the book, that should be there. It shouldn't be, one might be shocked to see how one, none of that. Please use I, it's just so much easier. I'm always shocked. 
here, it says, uh, at how vicious some of the characters are in the book. Perhaps the most disturbing to me is Brother Leon, the sadistic teacher who taunts his students to get them to bend to as well. I can certainly elaborate here. I can talk about the fact that uh, while I've never known anybody quite as vicious as this particular character, I have seen teachers who want the control, want the power. I could comment on the theme about how absolute power corrupts absolutely, and you absolutely see that in this book with Emil, with Brother Leon, with Archie, with basically that trio of um, antagonists in this book. I could talk about the fact that this would probably be a book that I would prefer to use with older readers. Uh, it was one that I used with gifted kids in eighth grade, but only with uh, an understanding from them about what we were getting ready to embark upon. I do think it's a better book for high school kids, mostly because Jerry's in high school, the story is set in a high school, and it ultimately asks about um, what do you do? How do you stand up? Do you face the bully? What are the consequences of those actions? So I could have responded in lots of different ways. I chose this. And finally, the final piece of this is how it reflects something in the textbook. In this case, uh, I'm always kind of thinking about moral development and how we make decisions based on where we are um, in terms of our moral development. And this reflects back to a discussion of Kohlberg in that first section of the book called uh, Knowing the Kids. So this book is a perfect example of what Kohlberg discusses in terms of moral development. At first, Jerry is willing to follow the rules to avoid punishment. That's pre-conventional. Later, Jerry simply follows the rule of his school and his religion when he decides not to sell the chocolates. That's conventional morality. Ultimately, though, Jerry risks his own life to stand up for what he knows to be right. That's post-conventional. Students who are still at the pre-conventional or conventional level might not be able to understand and recognize the reasons for Jerry's actions. So I've now applied the text. I've shown the reader that not only have I read and understood this book, but I see how it relates to something that was, is within the textbook as well. So those are the elements of a good blog post. Now let's try to put a blog post together. So I'm going to click on New Post, and you'll see my window open up here, and it's going to say, what title do you want to use? Let's do the absolutely true diary of a part-time, whoops, part-time Indian. So I'm going to do the Sherman Alexi book next. I come here into my box and the first thing I want to do is I want to upload an image. And it's going to say, where's your image? Where do you want to upload it? Have I saved it to my computer already? In this case, I haven't. So I'm going to cancel this for just a minute. And I'm going to come out and I'm going to go to Google and go to Images. And I'm going to type in absolutely true. Oops. True Diary of a Part Time Indian. Notice how nice comes up for me. And what I'm going to get here are images of the cover. In order to download it, I can simply click on an image, view it, and then do a right click and save my image as, and I think I'm just going to call it Indian, that's a little short, put it on my desktop so I've got it. Now I can come back here to my blog where it says create post. And I can click again on this icon. I can tell it to choose a file. There it is on my desktop. I choose it. In just a moment, you'll see it start to come in right here as a JPEG file, which is how I saved it. Once it's done that, I say Add Selected. Now, I have some choices to make here. Do I want the picture in the middle? Do I want it on the left, on the right-hand side? I tend to default to having my uh, pictures of books on the left hand side and I tend to do it in a medium format I'd like the cover large enough to be seen you can certainly do anything here if you want them to be small if you want it to be the original size if you want to center it those are decisions you make but once you do click OK and what you'll see here 
that's the HTML code for that book cover. And you'll see how it looks in just a few moments when we're done with the post. The next piece, remember, is the bibliographic citation for this book. In order to pull that, I can come up to my live binder, if I can find it. There it is. And I can go to the syllabus. And if I scroll down, there's my bibliographic citation. I've already done it for you. So I can just simply copy it and paste it. And I've now completed two pieces of my posting. I've got my book cover here. I've got my bibliographic citation. And now I'm ready to write the summary of the book. So who's the main character? Junior. Um, Junior believes that in order to get a good education, he must leave the res or reservation and attend a school where he is definitely in the minority. By the way, I can spell check this as well, but I'm trying to kind of do it correctly as I go along. So who's my main character? Junior. What's the problem? He wants to get a good education. That means leaving the res and going to a school. Um, the problem is you get to see my appalling typing here, which is not great, I understand, but that's okay. The problem is Junior has to travel far When he gets to school, he does not fit in very well, period. How does he go about solving the problem? Junior decides to be himself and to work hard in classes and try to make friends too. Along the way, Junior experiences some losses that make him question his place on and off the res. Ultimately, Junior decides his education is worth the sacrifice. Okay, so that is a decent enough summary of the book. Notice I'm drafting here and I can always go in and do some revision even after I've posted it. I can come back in so that's not a big problem for me. Um, so there is my summary. Now what else do I have to do in terms of the blog? I have to give my personal response to the book. This book makes me laugh out loud in places. When Junior and his friend discuss how good books give the reader boners, I guffawed. I think kids will too. So there's my personal response, and for the life of me, I cannot type the word junior today. I can talk about that. I can talk about who's the intended audience for the book. I could talk about the fact that I think this is really important because there are so few books with Native Americans or First People as main characters. I can talk about the... Um, uh, I can talk in terms of my response about other books that I would recommend to kids who have read and liked absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian and all the time thinking about and, and you need to remember this too that there are very few other books like this but I would suggest again for older readers that they look at something like looking for Alaska uh, if that's what they're going to take a look at I'm coming up here by the way to italicize my title um, and you can see it puts the HTML code in for me I don't need to have to do that so I've got my picture, my bibliographic citation, my summary, 
my response. And now I need to point to uh, something in the book that I learned as a result of my reading. So I can talk about, in this case, development. Developmental tests are apparent in Junior's story. This gets into a conversation of Havocurse. Now, you haven't read the book yet, so you don't know what I'm talking about. But in those first three chapters, you're going to encounter these kinds of things. Havocurse talks about changing relationships with parents. And we do see Junior negotiating those changes as he asks his parents permission to attend a different school. We also see evidence of changing relationships with peers. And again, I can go on and I can talk about where it is that I see it, uh, give some concrete kind of examples. I can talk about other developmental tasks, working for pay is in there, and developing morals and values and kind of challenging yourself is there. I can, again, give you more information. The point is I want to show the reader, in this case you're showing me, your instructor, that you've read the book, you've read the textbook, you understand what the textbook has to say about this particular piece of literature. Once I'm done with that, I have some options over here. You can schedule when these are going to show. You can add labels. Those are not required, but um, I would certainly, personally, I would do those. Uh, but you don't have to. When you're ready, you can click Publish. But it might be a good idea to come over here and click Compose and ask it to do a spell check just to make sure that you've not missed anything along the way. And as you can see, I'm OK here. Uh, the only thing that's highlighting are the things that are um, kind of not in, not generally included in a spell checker. So I can go back to my HTML code, click Publish, and with any luck that's been published. And let's take a look and see how it looks. There it is. So now you can see on the home page of my blog, I have this and this, I've got my first two blog entries done. Let me say a word about URLs here. As you're working on your blog, the URL that you're going to see at the top is not going to be the home page for your blog. When you send me the URL, this is what I need right here. I need the home page. And that is basically what you've called your blog dot blogspot.com. That's how it comes out. So make sure that you um, send me the right URL when it's time to submit the blog and that's I believe November 1st but the due date is there at LiveBinder. So that's how you do a blog posting. I hope this has been helpful. Again if you have questions feel free to contact me.